Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Pastor Joseph of House of Praise Church of the Living God. This is our pre-anniversary service for next Sunday is our church anniversary. And our theme this year is deliverance. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be a special message that God said. This message here is for people that go to church on a regular basis. Or if you in a church or you thinking about joining a church, God say he wants to expose these fake preachers out there. Mm -hmm. oh. Amen. Amen. And now uh, either you going now it's gonna be hard for some of y'all because y'all love y'all pastor. Amen. Either you gonna believe God or you're gonna believe your pastor. Amen. And one thing about me, I'm gonna show you scriptures. The preachers love people that don't study their Bible because they can take advantage of y'all. That's right. But Jesus came to me and told me it's time for it to stop. That's right. And if these preachers don't stop taking advantage of the congregation when it comes to their wealth, it's talking about your money. They manipulate a lot of people because most people, and this is not the downplay on y'all. God's talking to we talking to people that's members of churches. Mm -hmm. Don't believe everything the preachers say. Because in the Bible says, try the spirit. Right. You got a right to try him. But especially you find out that he's lying to you to make personal gain. And a lot of them doing that. Yeah. See, the problem with people is they want to be a part of something that's spectacular. Or what they consider to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But ain't no greater preacher greater than Jesus. Amen. And he said, the birds had a nest. Right. And the foxes got a hole. But I ain't got nowhere to stay. And he walked on water. Your pastor can't walk on the water. Amen. Amen. And he wasn't received by many because he spoke the truth. And the truth hurts people. That's right. That's right. But my title is called The Prophet That Profits. He a prophet, but he profited off of you. And he's banking it on that you stay uneducated. Because if you don't study your Bible, you don't know if he's telling you right or wrong. Right. And the average church girl probably don't know five of the ten commandments. That's right. And if you don't know five of the ten, how are you living holy? Huh. Look today and say, Pastor Joseph coming to help us today. Pastor Joseph coming to help us today. America is a nation with many false prophets. It's so bad that Jesus had to warn his disciples about preachers that come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they raven wolves. Right. Now, how do you know if your pastor is a false prophet? And I'm going to tell you a good way you can identify him, how he look at that money. Amen. The Bible says if a man desire the office of a bishop, he should be the husband of one wife, and he can't drink. He cannot drink. Amen. First Timothy chapter 3. Don't be lazy. I want you to do your homework because you may be sitting under a false prophet. I don't care how many members he got. And he can't love that filthy lucre. That's that money. He can't love that money. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Preach. These pastors are pimping their congregation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now watch this here, because I'm I can't, I'm trying to go with my notes, but the Holy Spirit taking me a different route. Come on. I want you to go look at how much money you gave your church last year. And we just had a, had a major storm hit Harris County. And the only thing your pastor gonna give you is some water and some non-perishable items. That's all you gonna get. Mm -hmm. And he probably got the water free. He ain't gonna set you up in no hotel. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna fill your refrigerator up with food. Nope. But him and his wife or his family gonna live large oh, yeah. off your money. That's right. The That's only right. thing he gonna give y'all is some water and some non-perishable items that probably somebody donated to him. And when school starts, he gonna give your kids a free backpack because he pimping you. You ain't gonna get nothing for your money. Amen. Now I practice what I preach. Amen. When Tropical Storm hit Allison back in 2001, I wrote checks to two of my members who lost everything. I wrote checks. I put money in their hand. Three cases of water and some ramen noodles ain't gonna help nobody. Amen. Amen. Now we just had a storm right here in Harris County. 
It's not the church's job to put me and my wife in a hotel because we suffer. I got renter's insurance. I'm supposed to take care of my own business. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Preach. Preach. Most Christians don't know their role. Jesus said, he that's the greatest among you will be your servant. We don't do pastor and wife anniversary of this church. We just do church anniversary. God said, you don't get no reward. Your reward is I save you. Amen. 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 You giving all that money to the church. Mm -hmm. And then when they have conference, they make you pay for a ticket to go to your own conference. That's right. How foolish are you? Amen, pastor. Amen. Because they love that money more than they love you. You ain't no member to them. You an asset. That's right. Preach. Preach. Help somebody. The church's job, the member's job, is not to take care of the pastor. Now, we ain't going to let y'all get off the hook so easy. You do supposed to give him some money. Right. Paul said, if we have sold to you spiritual gifts, it's only right that we reap your corner thing. He can have a salary. God is not against him have a salary. There's also another scripture that says, Mother, not the ox that shred the corn. If he's laboring in the word for you, you should reward him with some financial blessings. But whatever you see fit to give him. Now, should a pastor have a job? Yes, he should. Amen. But there are some uh, some ways he can get out of not having a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If God told him to go full time, then he needs to go full time. Right. Right. And if some members tell him or the church tell him, Pastor, we don't want you to work. We want to take care of you. He can do that. That's right. But on his own, he should have a job. That's right. Amen. According to what Apostle Paul said, if a man don't work, he ought not what? Eat. Amen. I'm going to get the scriptures later. I just got to get this off because I may lose some of y'all. Amen. I've been on my job 27 years and I had my church 24 years. My church don't pay for my groceries, my gas, and my food. My job do. Amen. Amen. Pastor. Now, I'm not supposed to get a love off it. Yes, but if you don't have it, I just don't get it. But I still got to preach. Amen. You go to these churches, they charge you to get in, and they and you give all your money year round. And when you when the flood come and all these disasters, only thing they gonna give y'all some bottled water and some non -pre He ain't gonna put no money in your hand. You gonna sweat in that house till FEMA give you some or the HLMP or TXU, whoever cut your lights on. He ain't giving you a dime, That's and he's right. supposed to help you That's in right. your time of need. That's right. Amen. Now, what is the member's job? Your your job is not to take care of your pastor. Your job is to take care of the house of God, make sure God's house is running and efficient and can have uh, things to take care of the community. The people's job is to take care of the house of God, not the pastor. But you do supposed to give him some money or some seeds. And his livelihood should not depend on what you give him unless God told him to go full time or the members say, Pastor, we want you to quit your job and we're going to take care of you. That's legal. If they want to do that, they can do that. Now let's look at Jesus. He's my greatest example. You know who took care of Jesus? I'm going to give you scriptures. You know who took care of Jesus? A handful of women That's right. that he had healed. And they dedicated their life and their money and their ministry and their time <laughs> to take care of Jesus. They gave Jesus whatever he needed. Luke chapter 8 verse 1. The women, a handful of women took care of Jesus. And they followed him wherever he went. Mm -hmm. America is a nation full of false prophets who claim to speak for God, but is manipulating God's people. And the Lord says it has to stop. God says it's time for the congregation to be freed from these money-driven pastors who refuse to work, but make their living off the people. Go get a job unless God told you to go full-time or your members came to you and told you they won't take care of you. I've been pastoring 24 years and I've been on my job 27 years. God take care of the man of God. That's right. The members supposed to take care of the house of God. Oh, they're going to get mad at me when I show you this scripture. Two scriptures to tell you, show you, proof that you're supposed to take care of the house of God, not the man of God, but you do supposed to sow seeds in Malachi 3, 8 and 10. Listen to what it says. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, when have we robbed you? We robbed you in tithes and offers. You are cursed with a curse because you have robbed me, this whole nation. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there will be meat in my house, not the pastor's house. I looked up that word storehouse in the Greek, brother Tony. It means temple. So the church can have what it needs so it can take care of the people in the community. But the man of God is going to be taken care of too. 
But he, he's not supposed to be living off the church. Amen. It's the people's job to take care of the church. Prove me now where with the Lord of hosts. And I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you want. God say, y'all cursed because y'all ain't take care of my house. My church ain't got nothing in it. Because y'all selfish and won't give to the church. Amen. Not give to the pastor, to the church. That's right. Because when you want to get married, want to have funerals, dedication, baptism, where we going to go? In my backyard? Where we going to go? In the house of God. Now this is the scripture that's going to really help. This one he says specifically, it's the people job to take care of the house of God, not the man of God. Amen. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 2 through 7. Thus said the Lord of hosts, this people say it is not time, not come the time that the Lord's house, the people saying, hey, oh, we ain't worried about the church. The church doing all right. God said, no. He told Haggai to tell him, no, don't be saying that. Don't be saying it's not time to build the Lord's house. I'm paraphrasing. Verse 3 say, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you to dwell in your seal houses? And this how that line went. You saying it's not time to build a Lord's house, but y'all living good, living like a baller. Mm -hmm. You dwelling in your seal houses. This was the prophet telling the people. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts. He said, Consider your way. Consider what you're doing. You're not taking care of my house, but your house is looking good. Mm -hmm. While the church line shambles. He said, Consider your ways. He said, that's why you have so much and bring in little. He said, you're working hard, but you got little to show for. Right, right. You eat, but you stay hungry. How you eat and stay hungry? Because my plate wasn't big to start off with. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know about you, but I go to restaurant. They say, you want a kid's meal? No, my grandson don't even get a kid's meal. Amen. We want a man's plate. Okay. And hope we have enough to take home a doggy bag. But God said, y'all eating and don't have enough because y'all ain't taking care of the churches right here. All right. It don't mention nothing about the pastor. Mm -hmm. He said, you drink, but you are not filled with drink. Mm -hmm. Ye clothe, but there's none to warm you. He said, he that earning wages, earning wages, but it's like putting a bag with holes in it. Right. He said, you making money, but when you put it up, it falls through the bag. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And he said that because they wouldn't take care of the house of God, but they was living large, their house was being taken care of. He's getting on the people, not the pastor. Mm -hmm. So your job is to make sure the church is powerful and strong. We're going to get to the man of God in a minute. Your job is not to take care of the, the pastor, but you do supposed to give him money. Amen. And so seize him. Amen. Watch this. So the recent tornadoes or the recent storms we just had in Houston. The church wasn't going to put me in the hotel. We're going to use the church money for that. We're going to use my renter's insurance. Amen. Like y'all don't use your renter's insurance. Amen. I ain't going to the church going to pay me no room. I got renter's insurance. I'm supposed to take care of my house well. The Bible says if a man can't take care of his own house, I ain't going to take care of the house of God. Amen. 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 I can say this because I'm a pastor. So I can rebuke another pastor. A heart surgeon can rebuke another heart surgeon. Right. You can't go tell a heart surgeon, hey man, you're supposed to cut that valve over there. You ain't been in medical school, but another heart surgeon can say you shouldn't do that because again, there's a pressure drop. You're going a heart surgeon can rebuke another heart surgeon. Right. A police officer can rebuke another police officer because he went to police school. Right. Now there was a prophet or televangelist. I ain't gonna say his name because YouTube might pull my video. He was a televangelist, he was a faith healer. He had a big, big ministry. But somebody noticed an earpiece in his ear. What his wife would do when people would write letters to the church and tell him what they was going through, she'll be telling him what the letters say. And he'll say, is there a Julie in the crowd? The Lord say he's going to deliver your son with that mask and then Julie raise her hand up and go pass and I give him more money. So this guy said, man, I think this man is his son. How could he know that? And so he hired a private investigator. You could Google it. He hired a private investigator and the man dressed as a security guard with an investment. The basement had a transmitter and picked up the signal and heard his wife talking to him. And he hurried up, got his equipment, and went and gave the man that hired him the signal they was on and everything. He confronted him. The man closed his ministry. But he had a law man. He was manipulating the people. Jesus told Peter, He said, Peter, you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, Feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. Then he asked him another time, I said, Peter, you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. Why do you keep asking me? Feed my sheep. What do you mean by feed my sheep? Tell them the word and tell them the truth. Amen. 
and then they can make their own decisions. Amen. If I tell you the truth, you can make your own decision. That's right. Should a pastor have a job? Y'all can talk back if y'all want. Amen. This is serious. Do you, do you think a pastor should have a job? Amen. Well, let me tell you what Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 3 10. And both of them can't be right. Either God right or the preacher right. Apostle Paul said, even when we were with you, this we commanded that if any would not work, he should need. Mm -hmm. That's right. Paul said, if a man don't work, y'all naive. That's right. Amen. Either we're going to believe God or we're going to believe the pastor. Now, now, this is in defense of the pastor. Now, you got some people don't want the man of God to have nothing. Now, that ain't right now. Y'all got to get approved. Preach something back in the country. If they ain't have no money, they brought old Reb a chicken. And old Reb will pluck them where he get his wife to pluck them. <laughs> Somebody going to rig his thing and fry that chicken. Amen. But he going to give him something. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. Listen, y'all. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, I don't want y'all. I'm not saying this to get off course. If you come to church, I don't care if you have 75 cents, a quarter, bring something. If you don't bring a gift to God, God is not pleased with you. You're supposed to bring the man of God something. Amen. If all you got is a dollar, then all you got is a dollar. So That's what? Right. You ain't giving to the man of God. You give it to the what? Church. That's right. Amen. Amen, Pastor. So now the scripture proof for that is you got to give a man of God something now. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. Paul said, if we have sown to you spiritual things, it is a great thing if we shall reap your what? Carnal things. Now what carnal things can you give the pastor? You sure going to let him have your car? You ain't going to give him your flat screen. You ain't going to give him your perfume and your cologne. You definitely ain't giving him your watch. So don't think you can reap in him. And you ain't gonna buy, if you do buy him something, he ain't going to be every Sunday. You can give him a little change. That's all right, God say. Then other scriptures support that you're supposed to give a man of God something. It's 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. It says, let the elders that rule be counted double worthy of honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture said, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that tread the corn, and the labor is worthy. If you if you working your ox in the field, and he pulled in that field all day for you, and you just put him in the barn, don't give him nothing to eat, when you go the next day to work, he's going to pass out, because you ain't give him no corn. Mm -hmm. So if the pastors are good pastors, it says, it's worthy. If he's a good pastor, you give him something. If he's a bad pastor, you pray for him. He's worthy of double honor. So you're supposed to get a man something. Or the woman something. The pastor's, now watch this. The pastor's survival should not be based on what the members give. He should have a source of income other than his salary if he does not have a job. Mm -hmm. Yes, the member's supposed to be financially, blessed financially, but not should be abused to do it. Right, right. Amen. So in other words, he should have some source of income if he don't work. Mm -hmm. That's true. When I was one month old up until I was about 10 years old, my mama did my laundry. When I turned 11, I had to do my own laundry. Amen. My mama ain't do my laundry no more, but I had to do their laundry. We had to learn how to wash, dry, and fold. These properties today, they taking advantage of the sheep. Right. You pay for their laundry. And Jesus said, but stop. Amen. You pay for the pastor laundry. I don't want to pay for that Negro to get his underclothes clean. Amen. Get your, let your wife do that. Amen. I'm telling you what they doing, how they pimping us. Amen. You pay for their laundry. Now you tell me if this right. You pay for their car note. You pay for their house note. You pay for their grocery bill. You pay for their car insurance. You pay for their house insurance. You pay for their medical insurance. You pay for their retirement. You pay for his restaurant bill. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You pay for his haircuts. You pay for his white nails to get done. You pay for her toes to get done. You think that's all about? Nope. When your wife's sitting there with nappy hair. <laughs> Amen. I, I want to let that marinate. Preach, preach, preach. You're helping somebody. Come on. She look, his wife looking like a beauty queen. Mm -hmm. And your wife look like she need to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Because you're taking all y'all money and taking care of them. That's when you right. put, And then they'll tell you, and then they'll tell you, if you don't tithe, you curse. No, we're under the New Testament. That's right. That's a right. testament don't come alive until the person that wrote it died. Jesus died. Hebrews 7, 12 says, Jesus became our high priest. And with the priesthood being changed, there was also a revisement of the law. We're not under the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, when you sin, the priest would have to kill a goat or sheep. That's without blemish. And sprinkle the mercy seat of God. And let that lamb go into the wilderness. We don't do that no more. He going to tell you, Paul say God love a what? Children. That's New Testament. And let him give as he what? Purpose in his heart. Not of necessity or grudgingly. God said, if you got the frown when you give, something wrong. That's right. Because that preacher said, we ain't trusting God. We ain't trusting God. We ain't here. Nobody supposed to know what you give. Jesus said, when you arm, you, Jesus said, when you arm, don't do it openly. Right, right. Go in your closet. Nobody supposed to know what you give. That's right. That's right. And you're supposed to give it cheerfully. If you're more happy, you're giving $10 than $20, then give it a 10, God said. That's right. Amen. The woman gave one mite. She gave everything she had. Jesus said she gave more than everybody. Because right. she gave it from a what? Oh. But they gave from the abundance. Mm -hmm. That's right. You pay for everything. And then he got nerve enough when he do a conference. You got to buy a ticket and register. Mm -hmm. At your own church. Yeah. When Jesus said the poor should have the gospel preached to them. Right. Right. That's what Jesus said. At least you're already poor. At least get the gospel. He going to charge you for that too. Mm -hmm. But remember this if you don't remember nothing else. When the storm comes, all he's going to give you is a case of water. Mm -hmm. All you could have bought your own water. Mattress Mac more of a Christian than a lot of these churches. Amen. Say that. When the storm comes, Mattress Mac, that's a man in Houston that owned the furniture store. He let all them people come in there and stay weeks and months. Yep. And he feed them hot food every day. And he don't charge them a dime. That's these right. churches ain't going to give you nothing. That's right. Amen. But a case of water. Amen. Amen. And some of y'all, y'all going to hear this sermon, you're going to still stay there. And you deserve everything God do to you and let them do to you. God don't stay there and support him. That's right. Because you don't put him above God. Mm -hmm. Mattress Mac gonna take care of people. Amen. And as many people come, he let them lay on that expensive furniture and he cook them a hot meal. He more of a Christian most of church. Your church ain't gonna give you no more. That's it. I seen a church and I told my wife, what the hell they giving these people? This line wrapped around the corner. Some water. Mm -hmm. And some Raymond noodle soup. That's it. That can cook in 10 seconds. For all that money you gave the church. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to put you up in no hotel. He ain't going to write you no check. You better not ask him to pay no bill. Because mm -hmm. you done fell out on your job or lost. You know, bad and hard time come everybody. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to give you nothing. Because he's a false prophet. His church is a business. And he's going to pass that torch to his children. You ever notice these big mega churches, everybody in their family become a preacher. God called the daughter to be a preacher, the wife to be a preacher, the grandchildren to be a preacher, the dog even to call to be a preacher. <laughs> they go pass that ministry on because it's a mega ministry. But in the average little church like ours, my wife, God didn't call my wife to be no preacher, but I bet you if there was a billion dollar ministry, you're going to say, God called me to preach too. Good. 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 So I'm going to the pastor. Y'all don't let them do y'all like that. Amen. Watch this. If you think this is a God, then you're being deceived, brainwashed, manipulated, or just stubborn and cannot accept the truth. Because I gave you scriptures. Amen. All you got to do is go look at the scripture. Either you're going to believe God or you're going to believe the preacher. If you're doing all of this for the prophet, why does he have to charge you for the conference then? So you have to purchase a ticket or reserve a space to have experience with God. To have an experience with God, you got to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's what you're paying for, to have an experience with God. That's right. He's doing it because his eyes, in his eyes, you're not his sheep. You're his asset. Now, I want to give you one more scripture. Now, you read this one. This one is Isaiah. This, this one here tells a real plan. If this one don't wake you up, then I'm going to just pray for you. Isaiah had that problem back in his days in the Old Testament. Isaiah 56, 11, he says, talking about the pastors. He said, yeah, they are greedy dogs 
which can never have enough. And there are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his quarter. That's Isaiah. Read it. I'm giving you scriptures. This been going on. God been exposing them too. They greedy dogs. They ain't it for personal gain. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I laid out my life for the sheep. What did he say the howling do? When the howling see the wolf coming, he free it. The howling is a person that's just doing it for the money. So when you call him and say, Pastor, call me. I'm, I'm in the hospital and I need a little help with something. My wife says, she go, and when you say, you talk to the pastor, we, we left him a message. He ain't getting answered. Yeah, you got to go to his secretary. He your pastor, but you got to... <laughs> You gotta go to his secretary, cause he ain't no he ain't no pastor. That's how you do Michael Jackson, Lil Wayne. Go through they you know they manager. I can't call Tyler Perry and say, hey, what's up, Mr. Perry? No, you gotta go to his agent. Right. But that's your pastor. Right. right. <laughs> you need him. You got. Well, just leave a, leave a, leave a, email him or talk. Leave a message. You can't get to him, cause he's a celebrity. He ain't no pastor. Ain't living long off your money while you're struggling. Amen. And if you like living like that, God bless you. But God ain't gonna do nothing for you because now you know the truth. Right. right. If you want to stay care of him, you know his wife. My wife gonna look beautiful too because she's queen too. Your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, queen too. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says it. Amen. If a man don't take care of his own house, how can it, your house come first? Your wife come first before my wife, brother Tony. You don't give my wife so many your wife nothing. Amen. Amen. I be mad too. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 